A beloved fire captain loses his battle with coronavirus. How colleagues are remembering him this noon. A family is now closer to justice 13 years after a loved one was shot and killed. We have details on the latest arrest in the case still ahead. And after some rain the last couple days, drier air moves in today. Some hot temperatures, too. We've got the latest forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a sad announcement from the Converse Fire Department today as one of their own lost his fight with COVID-19. Captain Bryant Anderson was with the department for 16 years. According to Fire Chief Luis Valdez, Captain Anderson is described as a selfless leader who always encouraged firefighters to improve themselves. The chief also says Anderson was always willing to lend a hand to help his department and his community. Valdez calls the loss, quote, devastating. Commerce Mayor Al Suarez says all city flags will fly at half staff until Anderson is laid to rest. He's a very loved and well-respected man in this department. He's a leader in this department, and uh, our department is certainly hurting from this loss. The department and Anderson's family will be working together to plan a memorial service. They'll announce details when plans are in place. Also new at noon, a third person arrested in connection with the murder that happened in Universal City back in 2007. Police say Michael Douglas Carroll Jr. is now charged with capital murder. Joseph Selders and Laura Selders were also recently arrested and charged with murder. Officers say all three are accused in being involved in Blaze Wright Jr.'s death. Police say the victim was shot and killed in his apartment on February 2nd, 2007. The motive, according to records, was burglary. Arrest affidavits revealed the police made that break in the case when two witnesses came forward in July. We have new details this noon about a shooting victim. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified one of the victims from a shooting on this past Sunday as 38-year-old Edward Rodriguez. Police say four people were shot at Mission Park Open Air Market on Sunday. That's on the south side. Chief William McManus believes one of the people shot was actually the shooter. He also says multiple shooters were involved, including a security guard who returned fire at one of those shooters. We're still working to find out what led up to that incident. They may not have been that they may not have meant to do it, but a group of gunmen will still have to face charges for shooting a man on the east side who was sleeping in his bed. He was hit by a stray bullet that came through his wall on South Olive Street, not far from the Alamo Dome. As Katrina Weber reports, police believe the shooters had a different target in mind. It had to seem like a bad dream for the 67-year-old man, going from his bed one moment in the middle of the night to an ambulance the next. Police say a stray bullet interrupted his slumber around one this morning when it tore through his wall in the 400 block of South Olive and pierced his ankle. They say three men, one with a rifle and two with handguns, started firing away from the intersection nearby, then ran away. They tossed the rifle in a driveway and left shell casings along a two block stretch. Daylight showed where all that gunfire landed, in doors, windows, and the sides of several homes. A police report says investigators believe this is the house that the shooters were aiming for. It definitely took the most hits, but the bullets didn't all stay here. Some of them hit unintended targets as far as a half block down. The wounded man's home happened to be right next door to it. At a neighbor's down the street, police say a family, including six children, escaped injury from bullets that shattered their window. No one was inside the home that police believe was the actual target. The shooters were last seen climbing into a car and driving off. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. An eight-year-old girl has now died after a driver in a pickup truck slammed into her bedroom this month. That driver, 23-year-old Isaac Barbosa Jr., now charged with intoxication assault. But right now, it's unclear whether his charges will be upgraded. Police say he was driving a truck back on August 6th in the 500 block of Leland in Kerrville. He ended up crashing into a home in the area. Police say the little girl was trapped under the car and was taken to a San Antonio hospital. The Kerrville Police Department confirmed she passed away yesterday. They have not yet released her name. 
And on San Antonio's east side, police are still trying to track down two suspects in connection with a carjacking and vehicle chase. It started around 11 last night in the parking lot of a convenience store off WW White Road. Police say three men stole a vehicle from the victim at gunpoint. Later, one of the officers saw that stolen vehicle on the road and so began to follow it, but the driver never pulled over. And that's when the chase started. Police tell us the driver crashed on Martin Luther King Drive near Interstate 10. Three men got out and ran off. Only one suspect was arrested at the scene. San Antonio police investigating why a woman was crawling in the middle of I-37 overnight. Police tell us it all happened around 1130 last night on I-37 at Commerce Street. Police say a tow truck driver saw the woman in the middle of the interstate and then pulled over to help her out. And that's when he noticed she had two broken legs. She was taken to the hospital and at last check her condition was stable. Of course, tow truck driver not facing any charges. Turning now to the pandemic, Bear County now reporting an increase in 143 new COVID-19 cases, bringing our seven day rolling average down even further. When it comes to COVID-19 related deaths, however, another 20 were just confirmed as COVID related in Bear County. The numbers in our hospitals continue to improve. The number of people hospitalized now dropping to 569. 255 are in the ICU, 184 are on ventilators. It is a concern on a lot of parents and educators minds contracting COVID during the new school year. This noon, we're learning that two employees at Northeast ISD have tested positive. Both people work at Rowan Forest Elementary School. We're working to find out what the two patients jobs duties are and when they were last on campus. We do know the two people were tested last week and later learned of their positive results. It's not clear if these are the only positive cases at NEISD. Meantime, there are more than 5.4 million confirmed COVID-19 cases all across the U.S. and nearly 172,000 Americans have died since the pandemic began. This is more and more students test positive at schools and universities across the country. Some now reversing in-person learning plans as their infection rates grow. ABC's Rena Roy with how campuses may now be the driving force of the pandemic. As the nation continues to battle the deadly coronavirus, cases are decreasing in most states, but deaths are still going up. An internal FEMA memo obtained by ABC News shows there were nearly 7,500 deaths last week, up more than 3% from the week before. One of the latest victims, Texas Christian University professor Robert Rhodes, his wife now urging people to follow public health guidelines protect yourself and your loved ones. You never know how much time you have left. A number of colleges across the country that resumed in-person learning are now changing course. The University of Notre Dame turning to virtual classes for two weeks after 147 people there tested positive. I think that with buy-in from everybody and some honestly pretty tough love from the university in the coming two weeks, I think that we can pull it off. Officials blaming off-campus partying without social distancing. They're now closing public spaces and banning students who live off campus from facilities. Every person needs to really ensure that they're not infecting another, and that means we can't have these large parties. Ithaca College is also turning to online learning, frustrating some students. The quality of learning remote just doesn't match up to in person. It's not worth $30,000. At UNC Chapel Hill, some are already packing up and going home after just one week of classes. They're not really kicking people out now, but I'm guessing it's going to get to that point, so I might as well. You know, it's, things are really uncertain right now. A lot of anxiety. I'd just rather not live like that. Health experts are calling campus parties super spreader events. The World Health Organization now warning that young people unaware that they are infected are driving the pandemic in multiple countries. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Coming up this half hour, what happened to the Lakers last night in round one of the playoffs? Oh, a guy named Damien. Larry Ramirez with more coming up in sports. And we're going to get an up close look at the massive wildfires in California right now and how they've impacted local communities there.
Now to the state of emergency in California. Those raging wildfires scorching more than 30,000 acres. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Napa County, which has been one of the most hard hit areas. This is the aftermath from just one of many fires burning right now in a very dry northern California. We're here at a mobile home park in Napa County, about 60 miles west of Sacramento. And you can see there are normally about 50 mobile homes here. This morning, it's an absolute apocalypse. Every single one, except for just a couple, are burned to the ground. And most of the shapes you see here, you can't tell what anything was, except for maybe the cars back there. There is a truck there. Uh, the vehicles are recognizable, but for the most part, this is all just a mass of hot, twisted, charred metal. Uh, the ruins of people's lives. We did run into a woman who lives here. She told us that uh, overnight, she believes that everyone got out of here safely, so that is a bit of good news. And this is literally dozens of other fires are burning in Northern California right now. Uh, thousands of people are out of their homes, evacuated, and the governor has declared a state of emergency. Now, the officials tell us that they believe most of these fires started when thunderstorms rolled through and brought thousands and thousands of lightning strikes. Uh, of course, the intense heat here has supercharged those flames, and it is expected to be well over 100 degrees again today. Clayton Sandell, ABC News, Napa County, California. Live look outside with live cam. Some of us woke up to find puddles in our front yards. Puddles of what? <laughs> right? Water? Water place. Right? Really? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, there, there you was a sprinkler on or what? I did not. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say God did because <laughs> my, Mother Nature, because there were puddles out at the ranch. You were one of the lucky ones. Yeah, there was some more rain yesterday, some good rain. The aquifer actually jumped up because of that. Uh, we saw it jump up three tenths per foot to 655.3. But on the flip side, what that rain did, look at mold, very high, 17,800. That's causing a lot of issues today, including here in the newsroom. Uh, we're going to talk more about some rain chances down the line, and the tropics are heating up too. We've got your forecast coming up. We were just talking about the mold. That's that's migraine mold territory right there. Yeah, uh, red eyes, runny nose. I got all that. Headaches. Yep. Oh, brother. Thanks, Justin. And how are you? Had nothing was, to do with it. Yeah, uh, it was supposed to be dry outside. <laughs> What's this deal? Well, you know that the drier area is moving in, so I would imagine okay. the mold numbers will drop off tomorrow. Can't guarantee it, but it should be that way. Uh, of course, we'll pass that, those numbers along to you tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, we mentioned the rainfall. There was some good rain in spots. You know, it was one of those days where it was super spotty, super isolated, but some places up over an inch, Molten out east, 1.52. Uh, Hondo, about 1,500ths of an inch. Lytle, it's a big winter yesterday, 3,500ths of an inch. Only a trace at the airport and really not much in downtown San Antonio. Uh, but uh, on the northwest side, places like Colotus did pick up a little bit of rain. 410 I 35 southwest side. Uh, there were some good downpours there, some lightning strikes, some gusty winds too with some of this activity. We're not going to be looking at that today. Drier air is moving in and things are much more stable. We have our ridge pipe pressure still sitting out to the west. This is that big ridge that's causing all the problems in California, the wildfires. And all that heat around Phoenix, Vegas, Salt Lake City, even up to 100 degrees today. we up around 103. And the reason we're going that warm, uh, forecasting those warm temperatures, is because uh, we have our northerly flow, but it's driving in some drier air. And we can kind of see that on water vapor. So that drier air is in place. You'll notice that it'll be a dry heat this afternoon. And once the sun goes down, it'll be kind of comfortable outside for a time. We got down into the low 70s this morning. And there were, in fact, some 60s up in the hill country. Dew point today. Uh, we'll start off in the low 60s, but we'll see it drop off potentially into the 40s this evening. So that is uh, definitely some drier air. As far as uh, rain goes, I can't rule out a shower or two down to the south around Beeville. They're along I-37, maybe over towards Catula, but we're not looking for much here around San Antonio. So the rain chances are pretty much gone at this point. Uh, they may pick back up a little bit Friday into Saturday. We get some disturbances rolling back in, maybe a little bit more moisture in place. And so there is an outside chance for some showers and storms then. Uh, 94 degrees right now. Dew point is at 63. Calm winds. Heat index is only at 95. We're not going to see much of a heat index today. And looking at the satellite picture, we do have some clouds trying to bubble up 
off to the west. But again, I just don't think they're going to have much success into developing into storms. 96 right now in New Braunfels, 94 at Randolph, 91 Bernie Stage, 94 in Hondo. So everybody's in the 90s with the exception of Rock Springs. And you're going to see a lot of triple digits on this map today. We're thinking 103 in San Antonio, 102 Hondo, 98 Kerrville. And again, there won't be much of a heat index just because of those lower humidity levels. Now let's talk about the tropics. Things are heating up there. Uh, we've been keeping our eye on two systems, one out in the Atlantic, another one in the Caribbean, and both have uh, a good chance of development. The Hurricane Center gives this a 90% chance of development, this one an 80% chance of development. And of course, the big question is, where are they going to go? Where are they headed? Well, let's take a look at some of the computer models in our spaghetti plots here. And both of them will work west. This one actually does try to go a little bit further south than the models initially indicated. This could go into the Gulf. Our uh, southern system also could go into the Gulf, but you'll notice the spread here once it gets into the Gulf. There's a lot of unknowns, and we're not going to make any guesses yet, but the, what we can tell you is if we're going to see any impacts in the United States from either one of these systems, it wouldn't be until next week. So we have some time to watch it, uh, but definitely something we want to keep an eye on. And until we can get a center of circulation, a little better idea of where these things are moving, uh, we're just going to have to put some rain chances in there next week and uh, kind of keep it general. We'll, of course, keep you posted. 103, the high temperature today, mostly sunny skies, northeasterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, and then uh, 102 tomorrow. I have added in some slight rain chances Friday, Saturday. We'll have to watch what happens to our north. Some of those complexes could work their way towards our area. Right now, the rain ch chance is low, but it is there. And then some more chances next week, depending on if we can get some tropical moisture in here. Guys. So we're calling this good because there's low humidity. Yeah, okay. nice evenings, nice right. mornings. Okay. <laughs> now the Spurs playoff run ended at 22 years. Yep. But the silver lining, the possibility of a high draft pick. Yes, the NBA draft lottery is tomorrow night. Three teams are tied for the best chance to get the rights to the number one pick. Well, the Spurs are near the bottom of that, but still, they have a chance, and you just don't know what will happen. And in the majors, the Astros, Miles Straw, got himself a nice cold shower yesterday. Coming up. For the first time since 1997, the San Antonio Spurs will take part in the NBA Draft Lottery Thursday night. That year, they won the number one pick and drafted Tim Duncan. Now, the draft lottery is based on records when the season was suspended due to COVID-19. The bottom five teams, those with the five worst records, own the best chances for getting the number one selection. But, of course, nothing is guaranteed. The Spurs sit 11th in the draft lottery with a 2% chance. No matter what, the Spurs will have their highest pick since 1997, unless, of course, they trade back or trade their pick away. So here are the odds for the number one overall pick in this year's draft lottery again. Again, based on records when play was suspended, Golden State, Cleveland, and Minnesota all have a 14% chance. The NBA draft lottery will ensure that the team with the worst record, Golden State, will receive no worse than the fifth pick. Atlanta comes in at 12.5%, followed by Detroit at 10.5%, New York at 9%, and Chicago at 7.5%. Checking out the final seven teams now, where of course the odds go lower. The Spurs come in with a 2% chance to win the top pick in the 2020 NBA draft. Overall, they have a 9.5% shot to grab a top four selection. The 2020 NBA draft lottery is tomorrow night at 7.30. Dame and the Trailblazers beat the Lakers last night in game one of that playoff series. Fourth quarter, C.J. McCollum rises up and goes three, and Portland is down three, C.J. with 21 points. Moments later, Damian Lillard with the ball dribbles around a screen and ties the game with a deep three of his own. Now tied at 89 is Dame time again, this time from 36 feet, and it's nothing but net. Lillard scored a game high 34. Less than 20 seconds ago, Dame feeds Yusuf Nurkic slam dunk seven point lead game over Nurk with a little kiss Blazers win 193 and they lead the series one game to nothing Lillard was asked about treating every game like a must win I think everybody has to um, because you know your season is is on the line um, and we we should be proud that you know we pulled the first one out you know it takes a lot of work to do it but our I think um, you just got to move on to the next one. We didn't have some big discussion like, oh, we haven't done anything because we have. We won a game. Uh, but we we smart enough to know it's like we won the game. 
that's a good thing. Now we got to prepare for the next one. Oh uh, yeah, we had a couple breakdowns. Um, which you can't have down the stretch, especially versus a team that's really high like Portland. Um, and, and those two, you know, the two-headed monsters are the ones who kind of, you know, you know, made the plays. Um, you know, CJ hitting a big, uh, big three, Dame hitting uh, a couple threes as well. Anthony Davis of the Lakers with 28 points. Game two is tomorrow night in Orlando. Check out the rest of the scores in the NBA playoffs yesterday. The Magic surprised the Bucks 122 to 110, taking game one in that series. The Heat knocked off the Pacers 113 to 101 and lead that series 1-0. And the Houston Rockets, playing without injured guard Russell Westbrook, beat the Thunder 123 to 108, taking game one of that series. Astros pitcher Zach Grinke dominated the Rockies yesterday, but he got a no decision. Grinke went eight strong, allowing no runs, three hits, no walks with eight strikeouts. He was awesome, but didn't get any run support. Bottom 11 tied at one, runners on second and third for Miles Straw, and he comes up with a game winning hit, a walk off job. And Houston takes it two to one, extending their winning streak to a season high six games. And the Rangers have lost three straight after losing to the Padres yesterday, six to four. I'm sure a lot of people are upset that the Lakers lost game <laughs> one of the first round. Yeah. Heartbroken. The, yeah, all the Spurs yeah. fans, right? Yeah, I think there's people just like, oh. Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to go through your kitchen and throw out any onions you may have? That's after nearly 900 people came down with Ah, uh, salmonella. Still ahead on the news at noon, what the CDC is recommending now. South Korea seeing new lockdown restrictions put into place again as a new outbreak has sparked fears of a second wave. Today it reported that 279 new infections. It's the biggest daily increase in five months. ABC's Julie McFarland reports on the coronavirus pandemic around the world. South Korea is at a watershed moment. That's according to the country's health ministry, who say this week is key to overcoming the risk of another nationwide outbreak. A new cluster in the capital, Seoul, threatening to turn into a wider spread. Traced back to a church after its leader tested positive, reminiscent of the early days of the pandemic when authorities determined a secretive Christian sect was behind a cluster of more than 5,000 cases. Now, new restrictions on social venues, including churches, city workers even spraying disinfectant on the streets around a church. Residents say they feel let down by the government. This man says he's not even going to the supermarket anymore. It couldn't be a more contrasted picture in Wuhan, the original epicenter of the global pandemic. Footage showing hundreds flocking to a pool party at Wuhan's Maya Beach water park, causing international alarm. Scores of people huddling close together in rubber floats months after the city lifted its lockdown back in April. Meanwhile, a leading British epidemiologist warning this week that with less than 10% of the world's population having been infected, we are still at an early stage of this global pandemic. Back in the spring, South Korea was quick to impose restrictions and implemented a heavy tracking system. Now, with just over 15,500 cases, the number is low compared to European countries and to the United States, which has more than 5.5 million infections. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. A new wave of flooding on the Yangtze River has passed through China today, and it is testing the infrastructure there. The flood, the largest to cross Chongqing since 1981. Officials at the River Water Resources Commission warned the Three Gorges Dam, the world's largest hydroelectric project, would see the largest inflow of water in its 14-year history. So far, about 128,000 people have been displaced by these floods. Back here at home, look at this massive fire. This is here in Texas in Grand Prairie, which is just outside of Dallas. A large fire burning at the Poly America factory that manufactures trash bags and other plastic products. Authorities say the fire broke out early this morning. Firefighters believe the fire actually started when a power line went down right next to an area where plastic rolls are stored. The Grand Prairie assistant fire chief says the fire could burn for a couple of days since those plastic rolls are huge, stacked eight foot high in some places. And Plastic is hard to put out. So far, there have not been any injuries reported, but people with underlying health conditions are being asked to avoid the area. Poly America's headquarters is right there in Grand Prairie and specializes in products made from polythylene. 
Joe Biden's former boss and his current running mate, Kamala Harris, will be tonight's main speakers at the Democratic National Convention. Harris expected to accept the vice presidential nomination, followed by speeches from the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and former candidate Hillary Clinton. Overnight, Democrats officially nominated Joe Biden for president. The delegates casting their ballots are not in a packed convention floor as in years past, but they're spread out all over the country. And for the second night in a row, some prominent Republicans crossed the aisle in order to stand with Biden. Joe Biden will be a president we will all be proud to salute. Tonight's Democratic convention is set to begin at 8. Outside with live cam already up to 94 degrees. Where's the dry air? Where's that? Where's that at? That's dry-ish. Oh, it's it's, it's working in. It's working in. We're going to see dew points lower this <laughs> afternoon. Uh, it was a little dry this morning too. It turned out to be a beautiful morning. Take a take a look at this picture on our case at Connect. Wait, that's nice. Uh, this is out of Center Point. Love that. And uh, temperatures up there in Center Point were really pretty comfortable this morning. We got down into the 60s, 64 degrees here around Kerrville. 66 Fredericksburg, but 74 here in San Antonio, which really isn't all that bad considering where we have been. 72 even down there in Carrizo Springs, and we should see some comfortable morning lows again tomorrow morning. Looking at the satellite picture, we do have some cumulus clouds trying to bubble up here. I don't think they're going to turn into showers or storms, but we could see one quick shower fire up out to the west of San Antonio. We'll keep an eye on the radar. So far, nothing there. Uh, temperatures already getting fairly warm. 96 Holotus, 94 at the airport. 99 right now in Divine, 96 in New Braunfels, triple digits, a good bet this afternoon. And in fact, we'll be up around 103 here in San Antonio. There is a 10% chance, mainly south and west of San Antonio, for one of those uh, showers or storms to bubble up. We'll have some drier air tomorrow again, some more warm temperatures, and then maybe some rain chances down the line. We'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Ursula? Thank you, Justin. The start of the new school year can be busy enough for children, and with the pandemic forcing school districts to make some changes, there's an added layer of uncertainty. All of that can feel much worse for children who have special needs. As Stephanie Cerna explains, there are ways, though, parents can make things easier on their kids. It's easier said than done, but structure during this pandemic is important for everyone, especially children with special needs being thrown out of their routines has really thrown everybody for a loop. Nicole Hendricks is a psychologist with the Children's Health Care of Atlanta's Marcus Autism Center. She says from face coverings to social distancing, knowing what to expect when starting back to school can help. I know it might seem silly to practice things whenever we're not in that context, but that practice helps us get more familiar and then makes it not so much of a shift in routine when we actually have to do those things out in public. Cheryl Clayman with the Marcus Autism Center says finding a face covering to match their interest and gradually working up to wearing it longer can also help children to get used to them. Sometimes the fabrics can be scratchy, sometimes they're really soft, sometimes the mask is too big, sometimes it's too tight, sometimes it's pulling the ears forward. Um, so it might take some mask trial and error to find something that's going to work. And to parents everywhere, they say, don't forget to cut yourself some slack we're not able to accomplish all the things that we want to accomplish. Kids are going to continue to make progress. We will continue to move forward. It's just, it's a hard time right now for everyone. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Whether it's just laziness or that crippling indecisiveness that seems to creep up on you when you pull up Netflix, don't worry, we've got some help on the way. A look at the new feature that makes the choices easier. That's ahead in your consumer news. And the Cowboys make a cut that's going to save them millions, but the player isn't really going anywhere. Larry Ramirez with that story coming up in sports. As America has taken to the road this summer, we have seen a massive spike in used car prices. After the break, details on all the ways you can take advantage and cash in big on your old car. Tech and business briefing from Cheddar. 
General Motors now facing mounting pressure to spin off its electric vehicle business in order to better compete with EV giant Tesla. According to analysts, if the spin off were to occur, the new company would be valued anywhere between 15 to 20 billion dollars and could potentially be worth up to 100 billion in the future. Speculation about a spin off has been circulating since the company's earnings call. Viacom CBS is in talks to sell technology site CNET to digital media holding company Red Ventures. Though the deal isn't final, the discussions would value CNET at roughly $500 million. That's according to people familiar with the matter. This news comes as the digital media company is looking to shed non-core assets and double down on streaming. And you may be able to finally catch a movie in theaters this weekend. Alamo Draft House, the movie theater chain known for its dine-in experience, is expected to open its doors to moviegoers this Friday, August 21st. The chain expects additional theaters to open up the following week. Now, in order to lure in customers, the theater will offer a free showing of MGM's Bill and Ted Face the Music on August 26th, just two days before it's widely released in other theaters and, of course, on demand. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Hannah Doba from New York. The salmonella outbreak linked to onions continues to grow. Now 869 people in 47 states are infected. That's according to the CDC. The cases involve contaminated red, white, yellow, and sweet yellow onions made from Thompson International, Inc. They say no deaths have been reported. The CDC also added the recall list cheese dips made with onions. These were sold from May 15th through August 6th at some stores, including Kroger, Fred Meyers, and Fries and Smith's. With used car sales soaring from coast to coast during the pandemic, some dealerships are trying to lift their inventory by handing over cash. How's that work for you? First, check a website like Kelly Blue Book or Edmunds.com and see what your car is worth. Then start thinking like a salesperson. Experts say you should get offers from both dealers and online retailers before you make any decisions. The key thing with getting the most for it is to shop around. If we paid you 15000 for that truck last year, we would write a check for 20000 this time this year. Wow. Experts say different states have different perks, so don't just take the highest bidder since some may offer you more cash up front. Netflix now testing a new Shuffle Play feature that'll stream a title to you at random. Shuffle Play picks content based on your viewing history or playlist. The new feature also goes a step further and actually plays the selection. If you don't like it, you skip ahead to the next one. Shuffle Play is available worldwide only to a portion of Netflix users. The company will use the results of the test to build a permanent Shuffle Play feature. Oh, you don't want to pick your own shows anymore? You just let it's, them do it There's too many you? choices. So that just... Yeah. Not, not that. any choice, though, in the weather today. <laughs> it's going to hit 100 again. <laughs> Yeah, we can't shuffle through. It's, it's, yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, 94 degrees right now. That's our high temperature so far today. The average is 96. So we're going to be above average. We've been above average every day this month. Uh, the low this morning was 74. That was actually below average by a degree. Uh, the record is 108. That was set back in 1986. Not in jeopardy, but we will be in the triple digits today. We'll take another look at that forecast. Coming up. Welcome back, 1246. Let's uh, take a look at the average high temperatures here in San Antonio. This is a chart showing uh, what our average high temperature is for this time of year, and we're just past the peak now. So, yes, this is uh, August is our warmest month, but we're now going to be on the downside of things here. We should start to see eventually <laughs> some cooler temperatures. Now, we still can see triple digits well into September. Uh, we've seen that before, but generally speaking, we're going to start to see things uh, cool down as we work our way towards fall. Uh, we have had 26 100 degree days so far this year. Uh, we average about 12, and uh, so we're above average there. Nowhere near the records, though, thankfully, except back in 2009, 2011, and 2013. But we're going to keep adding to that today and probably tomorrow, too, with more triple digit heat on the way. Uh, across Texas, there's not much to see other than some showers up across the Texas panhandle, and you can detect that flow. Everything's moving north. To south and this flow is actually drawing in some drier air for us today still the latest uh, satellite picture is showing some clouds trying to bubble up here across the hill country this needs to be watched because we could see a shower or two come out of this 
Uh, looks kind of similar to yesterday. I just I don't think we're going to see the coverage like we saw yesterday with some of that drier air in place, a little less energy in the atmosphere. Uh, but uh, again, shower two is possible, and the computer models uh, do show that uh, we can see uh, an isolated shower or storm, especially south of San Antonio. This is around four o'clock, and then that would uh, push south. I think San Antonio is probably going to stay dry here. Uh, rain chances are, are not good today. Uh, dew points really fall off this afternoon, so we should see dew points uh, low 50s, maybe even 40s. That puts us in the dry category here, so it should be a nice evening. Yes, it will be hot, uh, but it'll be a dry heat, and once the sun goes down, it'll feel okay outside. Uh, right now, we've got 94 degrees, dew point at 63, calm winds, not much of a heat index out there, and we showed just some of those clouds bubbling up. As far as temperatures go, 94 at the airport, 96 New Braunfels, 92 in Teguin, 94 out there in Hondo, 89 in Del Rio, and uh, 95 right now in Kennedy, 97 in Gonzales, one of the hotter places. And I think a lot of folks will be in the triple digits today, the exception, of course, in the hill country. Notice there's not much of a heat index for uh, anybody with uh, the humidity levels the way they are. Okay, in the tropics, uh, we're still monitoring those two systems, still a high chance of development for both of them. And we mention these because there is the potential eventually down the line that these could work their way towards the Gulf of Mexico, both of them. In fact, uh, notice though, once uh, this system gets into the Gulf, or if it does make it into the Gulf, there's a widespread uh, where these computer models think this thing will go. And that's even if it develops. Same for this other system. All of this to say, we've got to watch it, but it's just too early to know where this will impact the United States, if at all. Uh, but uh, because it does have the chance to go into the Gulf, it's something that uh, we need to monitor. And it could bring us some moisture. Fingers crossed. We want the moisture. We just don't want a hurricane or anything like that. So I'll let you know. Next week would be the time period in which we could see some of that activity. And if we were to get a name storm, which it looks like it's possible, Laura and Marco would be next in line. Here's our forecast for today. 98 degrees, 2 o'clock. We'll be up around 103 this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies. Again, some chances for a few storms south of San Antonio. And then uh, 102 tomorrow. Still some low humidity. Moisture tries to come back a little bit Friday and Saturday. And that's the time frame I want to watch because we'll have some more energy coming in out of the north. That could uh, cause, for some, uh, cause a few storms to develop. And some of those could move in uh, during that time period. And then also next week, with a little more moisture in place, Maybe some more chances for rain. So it's looking a little bit better going forward. We'll be right back. UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer says his biggest concern during fall camp is making sure his team follows the strict health and safety protocols as students other than his football team return to campus this week. Trailer has threatened several penalties for his players who are caught not wearing masks on campus during COVID-19. That said, do the players feel safe on campus? Well, I feel safe about um, being with the team, the um, trainers and the um, strength and conditioning staff, they have um, been doing a um, good job of us keeping us with masks, keeping us um, six feet apart from um, one another. And then, you know, getting tested and all that type of stuff. Uh, they, have really, they have done a really good job at that. And, uh, and making sure we're, um, you know, doing the things we're supposed to do so prevent the, the virus from spreading and everything like that. UTSA hopes to know by this Saturday if they're kicking off their season September 5th or 12th. Right now it's the 12th at Texas State. Dallas Cowboys cut defensive tackle Jared McCoy yesterday less than 24 hours after he suffered a season-ending injury. McCoy, an offseason pickup, went down at camp on the first day of pads on a routine individual drill. He suffered a torn quadricep muscle in his right leg. He can keep his signing bonus of $3 million, but the team will save $3.5 in salary. Very, very unfortunate. Um, I, I tell you, it just... You know, it makes you sick on a personal level. Anytime you see a, a player go through this, I can't tell you what he, you know, has meant to our D line just in a short time we've all been together. One of the big changes in the boys' defense is moving Jalen Smith, the weak side linebacker, and Leighton Vander Esch to middle linebacker. The move is expected to allow Smith to be involved in more blitzing plays, increasing his quarterback sack. So, what does Smith think of the move? I'm going to be able to really showcase uh, my versatility. Uh, whether it's cover, stop the run, blitz, rush the passer, you know, so for my first four years here in the league, um, you know, been playing the mic position 
and you know w was able to have some success. So now that I'm I'm back playing my old position, I'm just I'm just looking forward to dialing in and and learning. Houston Texans are looking for what they're calling a lethal threat against opposing teams by using two backs in their offense. David Johnson, who was acquired in the DeAndre Hopkins trade, and Duke Johnson. Both can run with the ball and both can receive out of the backfield dual threat guys to the max. So how will they be able to create those conflicts with the defense as they face this season? So the biggest thing uh, about this league is matchups. Uh, you try to pick a matchup that you think that you will win as an offense, or you pick a matchup you think you like as a defense. So when it comes to me and David, we try to pick matches to put us on the field at the same time to create conflict with linebackers or safeties, or to try to take advantage of our skill set that we both have. So I think it's something that we can uh, we can push and and be good at if we work at it. And, you know, just be consistent. All right, Ursula, David. Oh, Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Hey, you need a jump start to your school year? I do. There you go. Stick around. They say live, getting ready for tonight's back to school primetime show. It starts at 7 o'clock right here on KZ12. So while they're getting ready for the show, they've rounded up the best of back to school tips, gadgets, organizing, food, and a whole lot more. Hey, Mike and Fiona. All right, this show is all about the best of back to school. Yeah, school year is here already, and you know, you always want to be organized. So our good friend Karen Mead is going to give us, she always has great tips on organizing stuff. So she's got some really, really good things you're going to want to watch. And of course, Elder Eats, oh, he's going to the last slice for some great pizza. Because you got to have a full tummy when you're doing all that studying. So, all right, chemistry, that can be a tough topic, but we've got one teacher on TikTok, so it's just all about chemistry. And tips for homeschooling, because because parents, we know you need an assist, so we've got you. And you know what's really fun is getting off all the Wi-Fi wi stuff in the wireless devices and doing some just unique little things. And we're going to make an oven and make s'mores outside in a box with foil. And August, well, it is a popular month for birthdays, even this one right here. So we are going to let you know where you can find some great deals and some birthday freebies. Freebies? Freebies. Can I still get one? I'll tell I I'll send you the list. Pay attention. All right. Hey, back to school gadget. <laughs> as well. I always love the, the stuff like that. So we got that and a whole bunch more. All right. And SA Live continues in just a few minutes. <laughs>